In this video, we are going to take a look at publishing an SBSAR file. This file is known as a substance archive or a substance material. You can think of this SBSAR file as a transport mechanism for the outputs that we've been creating. So for example, here, just to illustrate this, I am just going to frame up my outputs and we'll just call this frame the SBSAR. And so as you can see, we have our substance, and like I said, this acts as a container for the outputs that we have. So this single file will then represent all of the textures that we've been building throughout this course. The SBSAR file, or SBAR as I'll call it, can be used by the various integration plugins we support. For example, you can publish the SBAR and load that into Maya or 3ds Max as a substance material using the substance plugin. You could also load the substance material into a game engine such as Unreal or Unity. The SBAR can also be loaded into Substance Painter as a base material, filter, generator, or texture, and thus be used to extend the capabilities of Substance Painter. Since we created a fully procedural material, the textures don't actually exist in the SBSAR file. They are only computed when called to do so by the Substance Engine within the Substance plugin. This means the published SBSAR file will only be a few kilobytes in size. Now the size of the published SBSAR file can increase if you were to import any bitmaps into your substance and then use those directly here within your graph. Essentially those bitmaps would then be embedded into the SBSAR file as well. Another thing to be aware of is that if you're using any nodes that they themselves have embedded bitmaps, those bitmaps would also contribute to the overall publish size of your substance file. So now let's take a look at actually publishing a substance. So here if I come up to my package, I can click this button here which is going to allow me to publish the selected elements. So we'll click this and first thing it's going to do, it's going to ask me uh, a location to publish to and I am going to just overwrite this dirt ground SBSAR. This is what I published just moments ago. Notice here that the size is 101 kilobytes. So here I'm going to click save. It's going to ask me if I want to replace this. Yes, I do. Now we get this dialog that appears with the publish options. Here we can change the name of the archive content. The compression mode, we're just going to uh, set this here to auto. And for the parameters exposure, we want to make sure that the output size and random seed are selected. With the output size selected, this is going to allow us to dynamically change the resolution of our computed outputs once we're inside of a substance integration. The random seed value is going to give us a random seed that allows us to simply change a value, which in turn will recompute all of the textures and thus give us a different version of our material just based on a different seed value. So now that I have this set up, I'm just going to click OK here and the substance is going to publish. You can see here that we have a progress bar towards the bottom. Once that's completed, the substance is published. Now I'm going to come back here and just republish this again. And I do want to bring your attention, if we take a look at this dirt ground, you can see that uh, all of a sudden the size has ballooned up uh, fairly large. We're now at uh, just a little over 3 megs. And so this is happening because of a node having some embedded bitmaps. And I know here, if I zoom in, you can see we're using this water level. And it seems this water level is using some type of embedded bitmap within it because I didn't notice this size increase until I actually published with this water level node. So I'm going to right click on the node and I am going to come down here and open reference and here I'll click open to open a reference of the substance here in the package explorer. Now sure enough, if I come here to the resources folder, you can see that there's this scratch metal bitmap that's been embedded within this water level SBS file. This is what's causing the published substance size to increase. So here I'm going to go back to my dirt ground and I can choose to keep this water level and actually it looks like I forgot to connect my dirt into this or if I don't want to have that extra size I could just bypass it completely and if it's not actually connected to an output it will not be included when we publish this substance file. In my case I'm actually just going to leave it. I think it's going to be okay as is. Now, before I publish this substance again, I'm going to make a few changes. And the first thing I want to do is I want to come over to my water level and I'm going to expose this. Uh, first, let's view these outputs in my 3D view. So I'm going to right click and choose to view outputs in 3D view. 
Okay, and like I said, I'm gonna come over here to this water level. I'm gonna set this value here all the way to zero. And uh, for the edge wet distance, I think I'll set this here to zero as well. Now I'm gonna expose these two controls. So I'm gonna come over here just to the function button. I'll click this button. Uh, again, it's being cut off here in the screen capture, but I'm choosing expose. And for the expose parameter, I'm just going to set the input name here to the default water level. We'll click okay. Let's do the same thing here for the edge uh, wetness distance. So come over here to the function graph button and let's choose expose. Again, make sure that I choose the correct name here and click OK. All right, let's double click an empty area of the graph to get to the root level. And here we have our parameters and I'm just taking a look at what the label is. So water level's fine and uh, edge wetness distance. This is all gonna be fine. All right, so I've just exposed a few more of these parameters that I can then control once I'm actually inside of an integration. Another thing that I want to cover here is we have our substance package, and then we have this dirt ground. This is what the graph that we're working in, but we also have this twig. So let me double click to open up the twig graph. And as you recall, uh, this was just a utility graph uh, or a subgraph that we created so that we could create this twig shape. So when you publish a substance, each graph that you have is going to become a material in the host application. So for example, let's say we publish this substance and we're gonna import this into Unreal Engine. We would have a material for dirt ground and we would have a material for twig. Now the problem with that is this twig is really not a material, it's just a simple height output that we're working with and we used it as, like I said, a utility for our dirt ground. So I can come over to this graph and I'm gonna double click just an empty area. This is gonna take me to that root level of this graph. And underneath the attributes category, there is an option here called output computation. Now I'm going to set this to no. By default, it's set to yes, and I'm gonna say no. And what this means is that when we publish the substance, so here from our substance package, any graph that has its output computation set to no, it will not become a material once it's imported into the host integration. So what this means, like I said, in the example of using Unreal Engine, when we import in this SBSAR file, we will only have a dirt ground material created for us. All right, so that's gonna cover everything that I wanted to do. So I'll hit save here, I'm gonna save my package. Now we could just choose to publish this again, but we've already published this substance once. So we have another option available to us now, which is publish the selected element with the same settings as before. So we don't have to open up the dialog again. I can simply just click this button and you can see here the progress bar is letting us know that the substance is being computed and now it's all finished. So now we've published the substance and I'm now going to jump over to Unreal Engine and I'm going to show you the result of this substance, our dirt ground material imported and applied to a scene. So here we are inside of UE4 and you can see that the material that we've been creating throughout this course, I've just applied it here to this ground surface. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I'm showing this in UE4, but we have many integrations. They all work very similar as to what I'm showing here. So I'm gonna come over here to this instance and it's gonna open up this dialog that allows me to change some of the parameters that I have set on this substance. You'll notice that we have our output size and our random seed. These are our parameters that were published when we saved or created that substance archive file. Here we also have our parameters that we created throughout the course. We have our roughness amount, our water level, and our edge wetness distance. So I'm gonna come over to the water level here. I'm gonna start to just increase this and you can see that I'm able to just create a puddle here. Uh, we'll also go ahead and work with this wetness distance. So I'll start to increase this a little bit as well. And just like that, we were able to make a change to our textures directly here in the viewport while working in real time. And that's the real beauty of being able to work with the substance material. I don't have to you know, go back to another application, make changes to my textures, export them, then come back, reload them, and so on. I can just work with these published parameters right here and get instant feedback to any of the material changes I'm making. Here in my content browser, you can also see the textures that are being generated for me here by the Substance Engine, as well as as this material, which is also generated by the Substance plugin here inside of UE4. All integrations work this way. The Substance plugin uses the host applications material and shader system to create the material and it just populates them with these substance textures that are generated by the Substance Engine.